seven in my pocket I am a healing prophet He's a promise in my garden I need to have a soft and sexual experience Yo! Welcome back to the channel. Blessings to everyone that decided to click onto the video. And on today, we're going to be talking about the five biggest mistakes that I see beginner mushroom growers make. But before we get into it, wipe your dirty feet off at the door. What that means is hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment at the end of the video so I can interact with y'all. And content like this can circulate around the people that's trying to really grow mushrooms, man. You know? So I've been around for a long time and I made a lot of mistakes. And chief among all of the mistakes that I've made uh, growing mushrooms is, you know, not treating mushrooms like an actual discipline. Mushrooms, growing mushrooms is a discipline, y'all. Like, you start off with basic concepts and then you move on to much more difficult things in the subject all right that's the same thing that we do in math like you start off with something as simple as you know being able to count your one two threes and then you move on to more difficult things like algebra and calculus growing mushrooms is no different than that you got to start off with the basics man like you know for example sterotech learning how to properly clean your flow hood, how to clean your Earl and Maya flask out, you know, to prevent bacteria buildup, stuff like that. So growing mushrooms is, is a discipline. You know, you start off with something as simple as, like I said, sterile tech, and then before you know it, you're putting whole monotubs together, man. So it's a discipline, and uh, you have to treat it as such. And it takes time. You know, you're not going to be good at growing mushrooms uh, overnight. You're not going to be the Michael, jo uh, Michael Jordan of mycology tomorrow. It takes time to build a skill set and to properly uh, put things into perspective, all right? So um, that was number one. Number two is not having the essential tools to be successful at mycology, man. Um, when I first started, I was reading the message boards. Everybody remember shroomery. I rem y'all know y'all know about shroomery. Um, so reading shroomery and stuff like that, they would tell me that, hey, man, you need a 15 psi uh, pressure cooker. But me being a cheap cheapo, me being El cheapo, I go to Ace Hardware and I go get a pressure cooker that only goes up to 10 psi. You know, and I'm thinking I'm getting ready to come back home and I'm getting ready to knock up some grain and put together an agar agar media, man. Man, I did that. Came back three or four days later. It's cobweb mold and trichoderma everywhere. You know, so learn from me. When, you know, you're starting off, you want the essential tools. You know you're going to need a flow hood. You know you're going to need a 15 PSI pressure cooker. You know you're going to need an Earl and Meyer flask. You know you're going to need an incubator so that you can keep your mycelium at a steady temperature growing at a steady rate. So get the essential tools, all right? And if you have to save up some money to make sure that you can get quality tools, save up the money. The information is out here. It ain't going nowhere. You know, don't just jump into this thinking that, you know, you can cheapskate your way um, to have to have a successful harvest and being a successful mushroom grower or mycologist. It's going to take some time, and you have to have the essential tools to be successful, all right? That leads me over to the next thing, which is, um, you know, beginner mycologists don't seek out advice for more experienced mycologists. And I know that some of the reason for that is that the more experienced mycologists just won't talk to y'all, you know? Um, I've been guilty of that in the past because I've been growing for 10 years and, you know, I'm busy and somebody hit me up, asked me a question, and I don't really want to answer no questions, you know? But all of that changes today, you know? Um, you have to give back to the pe you know, to people that was in the same position that you was in. You know, everybody didn't start off as, 
you know, a person that's able to put, you know, put together 20 and 30 monotubs and before you know it, you know, you go back to harvest those 20 or 30 and you got nine pounds in the house. You know what I mean? So um, seek out the advice from people that are not willing to give you just the A's on their report card, the Instagram growers, that's what I call them, but the teachers and the experienced people that's going to give you the F's on their report card. They're going to tell you all of the things that they did wrong and um, hopefully you learn from their mistakes. So seek out people that will talk to you, you know, like myself. This is the 5 a.m. my colleges and I'm, I'm here to answer all y'all questions. I'm, I'm, I like the fact that I'm sitting in a seat right now that um, I wish I saw somebody sitting in when I first started uh, growing mushrooms so that they can answer my question. You know, I now occupy that space where I can answer your questions, you know. Um, now, the next thing, which is the fourth thing that I see beginner mycologists get wrong is starting off trying to grow mushroom types that are too difficult. All right. So there's a reason when you go on to every website that sells spores, it's the reason why you go on the websites that sell you uh, cultural slants and stuff like that, and you see the same names of the strains pop up. You know, you're gonna see B plus pop up. You're gonna see Alka Benzi pop up. You're gonna see uh, Penis Envy pop up. Golden Teachers pop up, etc. There's a reason why you see um, the same names over and over. That is because those are the easier mushroom types to grow people, all right? Those are the mushroom types that's going to help you get good at growing mushrooms so that when you encounter more difficult types, um, you know, the process is, is, is simple, you know what I mean? But you have to take advantage of the opportunity to grow the less or, or the, uh, the easier grow types uh, mushroom type so that you know you can build your solid skill set you know what I mean um, the fifth and final things that I see uh, beginner mycologists or mushroom growers make is wasting their time with grow kits um, guys you don't know what went into producing a grow kit all you know is that it instructs you to add some water and put it in certain conditions. And then you come back a week later and now you have a small harvest. Guys, you put no work into preparing that grow kit for a harvest. You know, um, I'm against grow kits because I don't think that it gives you the fundamentals of mycology. It doesn't give you the fundamentals of growing mushrooms. Simple. You know, so don't start off with grow kits because that's going to give you a false sense of skill. It takes no skill to just add water, put it, you know, place it in certain conditions and voila. You know, start off slow. Start off with the basics and move your way on up. All right. But those are the five. Again, not approaching mycology as a discipline, not having the essential tools to properly be, you know, to be successful at mycology, not seeking out advice from more experienced mycologists, okay? Um, not growing the easier mushroom types like the golden teachers, the B pluses, the alka benzies, the uh, penis envies, okay? And not, um, and starting off with grow kits. You know, those are all of the mistakes that I think that people make when they first get into mycology. And that's just me shooting off the hip, guys. You know, let me know if I missed anything. You know, other than that, I'm out.